Hi, wonderful viewers, and welcome to another episode of my scholarly journey. Uh, so today, I'm going to do something very different. I'm going to give you a short tour of my lab. Often when I tell people I'm going to the lab, they ask me what exactly I'm going to do and where I'm going to. So a research lab is basically um, the space in which most of the investigations and the researches are carried out in. Depending on what type of research you are doing, the setup in the lab would be very different. Um, this lab is a molecular biology lab I find myself in. So whatever you are going to see today is basically what you would find in a general um, molecular biology lab. So I'll just give you a quick tour of the lab and some of the things we do on a daily basis. And if you are new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. Like and share this video. small compartment here where we store most of our chemicals and also our reagents and to my right you see a scale here which is used for um, weighing samples and some of the chemicals we use um, down here we have an incubator and this incubator is mainly used for um, incubating cells and this is a hood um, so if you are working with chemicals that seem to have um, a pungent smell or seem to be um, nauseous or an irritant then you would want to work in this hood here you do everything in there so that um, whatever it is does not come out to irritate others in the lab this is a biohazard bin and we basically use it to dispose of biohazard waste and then basically just step here if you cannot reach anything so that's what this is used for this fridge is a four degrees celsius fridge it's always set at four degrees in general we use it for short-term storage and so that's what this fridge is used for so this another fridge and this fridge is always set to minus 20 degrees celsius and basically we store samples that would usually go bad if they are stored in the four degrees celsius we usually store those samples here and so this um, fridge can store samples for um, several weeks and months compared to the four degrees celsius so as you can see we have other fridges here but of interest to me is this particular fridge which is usually set to minus 80 but as you can see it's about minus 81 here because it fluctuates so this fridge can store samples for a relatively longer period compared to the four degrees and the minus 20 degrees um, fridge i showed to you what you are seeing here is our cell culture hood and so basically the cells we use for our experiments be it mammalian cells or insect cells are usually prepared here for culturing. So after preparing your cells in this hood, you transfer them to this incubator where the cells are allowed to grow. And so as you can see from this particular um, incubator here, you can see some cells already in there that are being cultured. So one of the cool things you'll find in a molecular biology lab is a microwave. But mind you, this microwave is not used for heating food or drinks. It's mainly used when you are trying to prepare your gel. So that's when we use um, this microwave and that is why it's labeled not for food, beware contamination. You might have heard about gel electrophoresis or might have seen it somewhere. But basically this is how the setup looks like. And it's a technique that is common in most molecular biology labs. So you just put in your sample here, fill it with a particular buffer. And then when you switch on this, the current would cause your sample to just move within this particular uh, confinement. Here. Once you're done with your gel electrophoresis, then the next thing you might want to do is you would want to visualize your gel to see if the bands are well separated. And so this is the device that is used for that. One common thing you will find in most molecular biology labs are centrifuges. And as you can see here, there are different types of centrifuges. This type of centrifuge uses this type of microtubes. So basically, you just put in your tube containing your sample. And once you close it and allow it to spin, setting the right temperature and the speed you need, depending on the type of work you want to do, it will separate your samples into different layers and you pick up which layer you are interested in. Um, this is another centrifuge. And compared to the centrifuge I just showed, this particular one here uses um, relatively bigger tubes. So as you can see, but basically the work it does is the same as the one I just showed with a smaller centrifuge. The device you are seeing here is called a millicule or millipore. And it basically contains water. So the water that is contained in this particular device is the ionized water. And it's also not contaminated because it's filtered. So if you are working with 
tissues or samples where you do not want any contamination like doing genotyping then this is the type of water you would want to use as opposed to the water that flows from the regular taps this setup you see right here is a water bath and so imagine working on a sample which has a particular temperature probably a lower temperature and you want to raise it to a higher temperature all you need to do is you set it to the temperature you want to work with and you put your sample in with um in a water bath in this particular setup here and it will raise your sample to whatever temperature you want so that you can use it for your experiments so imagine having a colloidal solution in here that is a solution in which its components do not mix easily and so you might want them to mix so that you do not see them anymore all you need to do is to drop this magnet in there and just increase this wheel over here and you'll see this magnet rotating to mix up your components for you isn't this cool this small cute device you see here is a pH meter. So basically what this device does is it tells you the pH of whatever solution you are working with. So there are certain solutions where you would need a pH to be acidic or alkaline. You just put this probe in whichever solution you are going to work in and it will read the pH for you right here. So the last part of it for our tour today is me showing you these cool devices here. In a typical molecular biology lab, you would be doing genetic analysis a lot. And so these two devices are used for something we refer to as PCR. Basically, PCR is used in genotyping when you want to determine the genetic makeup of whatever tissue you are working with. This one here is used for a particular type known as qPCR. And this device here is used for the other type, which is the real-time PCR. So this is my workstation right here, the bench I do all my work on. I forgot to show you this, but these are pipettes and we basically use them to draw our samples. And so everything I do that has to do with tissue work, cell work, chemicals, everything I do is right here on this bench. And then this piece right here is my no gloves area. This area has to do with paperwork, data analysis, writing a paper, everything I do that I need a computer to do. This is where I do it. Like I said earlier, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button below as I bring you more exciting videos. See you next time. Bye.